Welcome back to our second lesson in our series, Getting Past Your Past. In our first lesson, we talked about the fact that mistakes were made in our lives and by other people. And today we're going to talk about the fact that people were hurt and that we're one of those people. Try not to get distracted by my shirt. Have you ever seen the picture of Sammy Griner? You probably have and, and don't know it because you don't know his name. Other people call him the success kid. His mother shot a photo of him at the beach when he was a toddler, and that was a decade ago. And that catapulted Sammy into internet fame. And so now his picture and all kinds of memes to go along with it have, are spread all over the world. What you probably don't know is that Sammy's had some problems of his own. That he was born with water on the brain and it had to be removed in a very delicate procedure. That his father was diagnosed with kidney failure months before Sammy was born. And that Sammy had to use his and got to use his internet fame to save his father's life. To acquire enough money so that they could prove that they could afford the anti-rejection drugs that his dad would need for a new kidney. So I just want you to think for a second that here's this cute kid that everybody knows about who hasn't had a rose-strawn pathway either, that his life has had difficulty. And that's where we launch into the idea today that life has pain in it, that life is filled with pain. And we're kind of used to that. Jesus said this, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on the earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. We all know that life has difficulties, trials, a lot of pain. Pain that we have within ourselves that we receive, and also pain that we give to others, whether we mean to or not. Today we're talking about how that we need to deal with that pain. How we can, in a sense, let go of it, or get over it, or at least deal with it. So let's start with the words of Peter who said, So be truly glad. There's wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials for a little while, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. The Bible makes it clear that pain is just a part of living, that our lives are going to have some pain in them and there's no way around that. We all carry around our wounds. John Eldridge and Stacy Eldridge in their books Wild at Heart and Captivating discuss both the father and the mother wound that all of us carry around. So yes, we carry our wounds. But we also get hurt. We get betrayed. We get people walk away from us. We feel abandoned. Sometimes we endure abuse. Life is just filled with a lot of pain. The great news is that there's healing available. But healing's a choice. Healing is something that we have to willingly enter into and, in a way, surrender to. But it is there for us. Jesus used Isaiah 61, verse 1, to describe his ministry, and this is what it says. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. As soon as we decide to stop hiding from our pain, stop ignoring it, and stop running from it, and willing, we are willing to face it, we can start to experience healing. One way we enter that healing is through something called grief that we never want to enter willingly, but we need to learn to enter willingly. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And in the words of Charlie Brown, or Charles Schulz, good grief. <laughs> What's good about grief? God knows that we need grief. That grief can bring us to some great places in our life. What is grief? Why is grief so good for us? Grief helps us let go. Grief helps us come to a place where we can release what has been lost or what we can't have or what the expectations that we once held. Grief is a way to enter into the pain, experience the feeling of it, to know it, and let it go, to find a new day, a new life. Well, how does that work? Well, the Bible says this in Psalms, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. So in one way, as soon as we enter grief, as soon as we allow ourselves to feel the losses, we invite God into the situation. Actually, what we find is that God's already there, waiting in the moment of pain to comfort us and to be with us in those moments. So there are a lot of things in life that we need to grieve. We need to grieve expectations that cannot be met. Often when we marry someone, we have expectations for what they will be and how they will meet our needs. And no one can actually do those things. And we need to grieve the loss of what we can't have so we can actually enter into and experience a real relationship that can be had. 
we have things like job expectations. We also have actual losses. We've lost people that we love. These things need to be grieved. The idea that we can just ignore them until they go away, or we can just stay so busy we never have to think about them, it's, it's not healthy for us to do those kind of things. We need to learn to grieve. Now, one of the problems with grief is we actually need to do it with other people. That means that grief happens in relationship. Why it's that way is that in order to grieve, we have to let go. To let go, we need something to hold us up to keep us on our feet while we are letting go. That's where other people come into our lives. What happens, though, when we enter into grief is often we isolate ourselves. And in that isolation, we cannot let go because we don't have the support to hold us up. And so when it comes to the idea of grief, we need to grieve, but we also need people that we can be open with, we can be vulnerable with, so that we can be held up in our times of letting go. The last issue we'll talk about today is the issue of forgiveness, because often grief comes because people have hurt us and we need to forgive them. We need to let go of what can never be so we can wake up to a day of what really is and find the joys in in that day. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. When we don't forgive people, it's kind of like drinking poison expecting the person that we're angry with or that we feel like owes us an apology to get sick. Unforgiveness imprisons us. In fact, it's kind of like locking ourselves in a prison of unforgiveness while they walk around free, often not even knowing what's going on. So unforgiveness is a punishment upon ourselves. And so when we are bitter, it can cause a a bitter root, the Bible says, that can really mess up our lives and poison our days. We also need to understand that we need forgiveness. We've heard people too. And the Bible says in Matthew, If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. So, there's that. We need to give and we need to receive forgiveness. So how are we going to do that? How can we actually forgive people in our lives? Two things we can start with. Although there are many we could talk about today, let's just finish with two ideas. First, pray for those who've hurt you. And that comes out of Matthew 5.44, where he tells us to pray for our enemies. When we begin to actually pray for someone, for their good, not that God would judge them, but that they would be blessed and that they would come to know God, they would be healed, we, set our, we connect with God over that person. We connect with their heart. We have compassion for them. So prayer for that person can enable us to have a better heart toward forgiveness toward them. And then the second thing is simply just completely forgive them. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Often we struggle with forgiveness because we struggle with being forgiven, or we may struggle with forgiving ourselves. And so forgiveness is something that's a conscious choice. I say, I forgive that person. And when the feelings and the anger come back, I remind myself, I forgive that person. Every time I rehearse the events, I just drive them deeper in my mind. So then once I have made the choice to forgive, then I turn to my Father, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help me to forgive. I don't have the ability to forgive in myself. And then every time the feelings come back, I turn it back over to Him. So if you've been hurt or you feel like you've hurt others, there are two things we need to deal with. One is grief. We need to grieve the things that have been lost. The other is forgiveness. We need to let things go and let people go and realize they don't actually owe us anything. We also need to learn to receive God's forgiveness for us. That way it's easier to forgive other people. I know it's a lot to think about. I know it's not easy. But why not take this talk and talk to your father about it and ask him to teach you.